so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl varista neze and this is nezeville guys in today's video i'm going to be addressing the late prophet tb joshua's fans followers and non-fans and not just only those that have interest in the prophet or the news the bbc documentary and all of this that is going on i'm going to be addressing everybody hearts to hearts human to human common sense to common sense and logic to logic you see when that news broke if you guys observed it took some time more than a week before i started making videos about it and i explained in my community post that a lot of you guys have reposed an enormous amount of trust in me to deliver news true news and quality news to you so when a trend pops up i know that if i just jump on that algorithm and jump on that search and make a video it's going to get me a lot more views because at the heat of that moment that is when a lot of people are searching for information about that breaking story but i'll typically risk and sacrifice all that engagement on the altar of bringing something substantial to you so i don't mind bringing the news a week uh, two weeks after it breaks as long as what i'm serving to you is of quality and i really do appreciate that you guys appreciate that about my channel so when that um, news of the late prophet broke i didn't rush to start putting videos out one it's a very sensitive topic two it is just in my nature to be very thorough about everything so i went back and i did plenty of research of course i did watch the three hour of bbc documentary i watched so many other interviews i even went to listen more and more to his sermons to his preachings i went to their channel the youtube channel of the official youtube channel of the synagogue church of all nations i watched it i watched interviews for the the prophets and against the prophet news going back as far as 10 15 years you know i wanted to have all of this information and all of these facts so when i bring them to you you guys can have a holistic knowledge of everything that has gone down that is going down and that may go down so um in the course of this research and in the course of putting out this content about the late prophets it opened my eyes to a lot of things that are affecting us as a people as black people especially when it comes to the context of religion and the context especially of our men of god and this video is just me addressing them because when something needs addressing i will address them regardless of whose ox are god please i will implore you if you're someone that do not know how to differentiate or distill emotions from logic if you are myopic or you're someone that does not give in to reasoning if you're someone that is stuck in your thoughts and stuck in your ways and do not give any room to relearn or unlearn or you feel offended by a certain subject regardless of what is said about it please it's advisable that you do not listen to me okay because i'm going to be stating facts and i'm going to be pretty blunt one of the major things that i have learned in all of this saga if i can address it as that is the importance for self discernment okay in our prayers every day we should ask god for a spirit to know him personally to have a personal relationship with god and just to add here whatever i am saying here is not relating to the prophet tb joshua i am saying what i have learned and what we should learn from the comments from the d positions from the views of people that came to light as a result of this okay now self discernment is very important as a human being as a christian as a spiritual person many people fall victims to spiritual leaders and men of god and all the many vices that happen in places of worship just because they are desperate for solution they are desperate for miracles they are desperate for testimonies they are desperate for signs and wonders and not only are they desperate they believe that they cannot invoke they cannot bring about these things except through the help of a third party and that's why you see so many people running from church to church until they fall victim the truth is that some of us possess powers powers of healing powers of answered prayers 
powers of different gifts that we possess that are even stronger than those gifts that we believe that the men of God have. But because we do not even believe it, we do not see it, we do not harness it, we do not create that personal relationship with God, we always find ourselves going about looking for what is not lost, looking for miracles. And trust me, when you are desperate for a miracle, when you are desperate for a solution, you would fall victim of somebody that would offer that solution to you. Some people that will go to a church and just because the pastor does not do healings and all those um, casting and binding, they will believe automatically that that man is not ordained, he's not, he's not a man of God. Then they will go to where those, you know, those things are happening. And sometimes they end up falling victims. So as people that believe God, we should also believe because I don't want to quote the Bible so much here, but there's a, there's a part of it that says, greater is he that is in me, right? Not that he's in my pastor. You might have all the solutions to your problems within you. If only you can pray and have that direct connection with God. When Christ came, Christ broke the boundaries. He eliminated the bridge. And he has given us the ability to communicate directly, to have that close interface directly with God through him. So why can't we form that relationship? Several stories that I have covered on my channel that involve people falling victim of, or falling prey, or falling victim, are people that are so desperate to go to these different prayer houses. Now remember that I am not speaking of the prophet, the late prophet T.B. Joshua. I am speaking from the experience that I have gotten. I am using this case study to address in general this subject of religion and spirituality. We have so conditioned ourselves that whatever happens to us, we give it a different interpretation. Nothing, nothing can ever happen that will not be linked to you being, you know, it being an attack on you. And when you feel like you are under constant attack, then you would always be seeking for constant defense. You remember the case of the married woman? We covered it on this channel some months back. A married woman who was looking for the fruit of the womb and because of the kind of confidence that she has reposed on her man of God, the man of God in quotes asked her that he had to sleep with her to break all spiritual boundaries in her uterus and you know usher in the receipt from the holy spirit into her for her to be able to take him so in order not to drag this whole point further what i want to let us know is that sometimes we underestimate our powers as individuals as christians as believers as children of god and when you believe that you cannot bring blessings to yourself through christ jesus from god when you believe that your miracles and your blessings and your breakthrough can only come from a church or a mox or a man of God, you would find yourself running helter skelter and if care is not taken, you may fall victim. Another issue that has arisen in this case that is important for us to address is the issue of some people asking, okay, why are these people talking now? Why are they just coming out now that the prophet is late? Why didn't they speak all along when he was alive? First and foremost, you know, a little research, a little Google search, a little findings would, would give you some knowledge, some knowledge that will be vital before you make assertions on social media. If you go back to search, if you do a little research, you'll find that a lot of these alleged victims, I would always use alleged because it hasn't been ruled by any court of law. So even if these people coming out are 50, 100, we'll still refer to them as alleged, okay? Nothing is a fact for now. The truth is that these alleged victims have been coming out for years, for a long time, even during the lifetime of the late prophet T.B. Joshua. That Bisola lady, for example, she has been speaking non-stop without fear, granting interviews, they're everywhere. The lady from South Africa, the chunky lady from South Africa, she has been speaking. The pastor, is it Pastor Agomo? He has been speaking, so people have been speaking all along but that's on the side now let me go to the core of the lesson it is very funny when i hear people say why didn't they speak all along why are they just speaking now and the truth is that that reason is the reason why a lot of people who have faced abuse who have faced sexual molestation do not come out to talk because every day and every additional day after that incident seems like too late seems like more doubts 
But let me tell you the truth. There is no time frame, both legally and physically and spiritually, there is no time frame for a person who has suffered injustice to speak. Listen, an incident may occur in somebody's life, okay? And that person may be timid about it. That person may be ashamed about it. Maybe because of age, maybe because of exposure. For different factors, somebody might not be able to come out to talk about that experience. A lot of people are going through child trauma, childhood trauma. Some people are watching me. Going through childhood trauma of what happened to them that messed them up or reshaped their life for the worse and they have not been able to speak about it. Does not mean that that thing didn't happen. Does not mean that that thing is a lie. Sometimes you just do not want the negative audience. You just do not want the negative press. You just do not want people to see you as that person that was raped. You do not want people to call you a liar. So you'd rather just keep it. There's a saying in my place that whenever somebody wakes up, is that person's morning. If you wake up by 5 a.m., that's your morning. If I wake up by 11 a.m., that's my morning. That's when my day starts. Everybody do not have the threshold to absorb or react to trauma the same way. So you might tell yourself, oh, if it's me, I would have spoken immediately. Who made you the benchmark for how every other person should behave? Who made you the yardstick? Who made you the ideal for how every other person should behave? Trauma is just like grief. People react to grief differently. Some people will lose a partner and they will be crying and yelling. Some people, they won't, they won't cry, they'll just be looking. But that person that is not crying might even be more broken, more damaged than the person that is letting it out to cry. So people react differently. It is absolute fully for you to adopt a standard for yourself and consider it the ideal. Oh, if it was me, I would have done that. Who told you that you are the world's best practice? Human beings are different. So some people are slower to come to terms with these things. Some people, it might be maturity, it might be exposure. Just imagine a lady, for example, in primary school, and she gets sexually molested by her father, for example. At that age, you don't expect the guts, the nerve, the exposure that she would have as a 50-something-year-old woman to talk about it. With growth comes wings. With growth comes development. With growth comes wisdom. With growth comes pushing some things and not caring how people see you. So just because that child didn't talk when it happened does not mean that that child is a liar. And that is why in law, there is no limit. There is no benchmark. There is no time frame at which you can institute a criminal charge against somebody. So if somebody stole or raped or killed or murdered 20, 30 years ago, the person can still be brought to book today. We've seen it with Bill Cosby. We've seen it with R. Kelly. The law is not stupid. The law understands. So for those asking, why didn't they come out? Remember, I am not referring to the prophet TV Joshua because even in the case of the prophet TV Joshua, these people did come out. I'm talking about the general mindset that when someone doesn't come out immediately to narrate what happened to them, they are instantly lying. No, it's very possible that a victim of something might not have the courage to talk about that thing, to address that thing, to tell the world about that thing until a certain time. So please let us be very careful with that assertion. That is why a lot of victims of rape and sexual abuse do not talk. Because they believe that when they talk, people will doubt them. People will ask them, why are you just talking now? Something that happened three years ago. Why didn't you talk then? It's a very wrong thing to say. Allow people grieve and get the courage they need at their own pace. It doesn't have to be according to your own ideals. Another thing that I have learned from all the reaction flying around in this case is that we really, really do need to stop idolizing our men of God. They are not infallible. They are capable of mistakes. They are capable of sin. They have their vices. They have their own shortcomings. Any man born of flesh has the propensity to make a mistake. And that is why they are called man of God, not God of man. They are man before they became of God. So they are still man and causes the flesh of man. No man that walketh the surface of the earth 
is perfect. I know we see our men of God in the pulpits with the perfect tuxedos and speaking the word of God and they are touching us in our bones and we are believing in God because of how they speak to us. Yes, they can be charismatic. They can be great orators. They can be indeed men of God. But remember that they are still men of God. Some people have equated their, their spiritual leaders, their pastors, to God themselves. The, the, the line between that between the two has been dimmed. In fact, almost does not exist. They see the man of God as God himself. No offense, but take the example of um, the deeper life ministry, okay? I remember back then growing up. <laughs> if you grew up in the 90s, if you were born in the 80s, I don't know about 70s, I don't know when the church started, but if you were born back then, you will know how much of an abomination it was to watch television. It was prohibited. Staunch Deeper Life members didn't have television sets in their house and they would defend it. They would swear that it is right because that is what their man of God has taught them to believe. Fast forward to the 21st century. This church now has huge TV screens. They air their program on television stations. This was a church that condemned people watching television. Now, I'm not trying to bring down the church or the pastor. I'm trying to make you understand that a human being cannot know it all. A human being cannot do it all. No human being has the knowledge and the act of God. What a pastor might think is perfect and ideal today might turn out not to be in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years time. So they are flesh and blood. The sooner we get to realize that our men of God are flesh and blood, the less likely we will be to jump into any argument and swear with our life and our generation that they can do this and they cannot do this. The sooner you'll be able to slow down and give benefit of doubts and understand that anything can happen. Please, understand that no man is God. And that would bring us to the next point. Vouching with our head on a slate for somebody that you do not live with. Somebody that you do not have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with. There's a saying that the only person you can vouch for is the baby in your womb. Even the baby on your back. <laughs> you can be walking and that baby on your back will pinch somebody or grab somebody's banana and you wouldn't know. So the only person that you can vouch for 1,000, 1 million percent for is the baby in your womb. I'm not saying that you cannot trust somebody. But you see that carry your head and put on a slate and say, if this person did this thing, top of my head. Don't you dare do it for any human being. Because what you know is what you see. You do not know the ones that you do not see. There's some people that have been married 10, 15, 20 years, 25 years. We've covered some of these stories on our channel. And by the time the wife or the husband does something <laughs> and knocks the other partner down, the partner will be wondering, is it this person? that I've been married to for 20 years that could do this then. That is someone that you are married to. You guys have been together in the same house, in the same room, naked, beating together, eating together, rearing children together, and some things will happen. You won't believe that that person can do such a thing. Talk less of somebody that you do not live with. Let us take it easy. I grew up Catholic, and I am Catholic. And I didn't become staunch Catholic because my parents were staunch Catholic and they forced me to become Catholic. No, I became Catholic because I discovered Catholicism by myself. I discovered God through the Catholic Church. And boy oh boy, I was deep in the Catholic Church. Attending meetings, arranging church programs, being a legionary, sweeping the church, always at the Blessed Sacrament. Oh, my rosary was always on my hand. I was that Catholic girl. But if I hear that maybe, God forbid, the Pope did something or the, my priest did something, I cannot come and say, kill me if this person did this thing. It is not possible. I swear on my life. Even you yourself as a human being, that sometimes that you will do something that you won't, you won't even believe that you are capable of doing that kind of thing. You yourself can surprise yourself of another person and that is why we see sometimes some madams when a small girl a house help comes to tell them your husband did this your husband touched me they will just start beating
hitting the baby and tearing the girl into two and sending the girl away. My husband can never, never. We've seen these stories. You were not there. You traveled, you were away. And someone is telling you that, see what a child is telling you, see what this man did to me. But because of you have over vouched for somebody that is not yourself, you cannot calm down. Use the sense that God gave you. Ask questions. What happened? Ask the accused. Ask the defender. Investigate. For the truth, you vouch. And you immediately term that person a liar. Let us take it easy with that. Many times we vouch for people that we do not live with. We do not know beyond the surface of what they show us. You can vouch to the extent at which you have a personal experience of. For example, if a pastor is a great teacher, his teaching has changed your life. His teaching taught you a lot about the word of God. His teaching drew you closer to God and made you give your life to Christ. You can vouch about the teaching of that pastor and say, you see, when it comes to the word of God, I can vouch this man knows how to dish out the word of God. That is vouching for something that you have a personal knowledge of. Not vouching about the person's personal life, the person's personal actions that you do not have control over. Neither are you around that person that much to witness or not to witness it. There is no way that you in your house would have the ability to know that person completely. Now this is not by any chance saying anybody did anything or not. I am speaking generally because these things come up every day. Sometimes we cover stories of religious leaders and some people do not even want to hear the facts of the case. According to them, as long as it's this pastor, oh my God, no, no, no. He cannot do it. How do you know? The people that at least are close to be able to know what a man can do and cannot do or what a person can do are their family members, the people that live with them. Let me, let me put it broadly, not just family members. The people that live in the same house with them, that experience them when they are angry, when they are frustrated, when they are sad, when they are depressed, when they are hungry, when they are not in the mood. Those people that reside with them are in a better position to even know. But even those people cannot even know completely. Talk less of you. In as much as I would never support when a bad news comes out, you just immediately take the bad news and start running without confirming the truth. It's still not ideal for you to overconfidently stake your life and vouch for somebody that you do not live with or you do not know personally. Take a chill pill on that. And lastly, last but not the least, religion, Christianity, faith should never replace common sense. If God didn't need us to use common sense, he would have just given religion and expunged common sense from our makeup. But he still gave us common sense anyway, said that religion is the opium for the masses. Opium. And opium is something that, that negates, dulls, suppresses somebody's way of thinking, somebody's, a people's ability to think in depthly. An opium, like a sedative. It sedates your logic. It can sedate your common sense. Nobody said you shouldn't serve God. But don't leave your common sense at home. Do not. I do not know if you love to read. I don't know how far you have read about the origin of religion and the role that religion has played in the history of man. Religion was used to sedate people from revolting, from standing up for themselves. Slavery, colonization, religion was a tool employed to calm the people down. And because of this same religion, how we are practicing it in Africa, in countries like Nigeria, that is why we let so many things slide. People are not being held accountable. Why? Because of the religion of convincing yourself that it is God that will judge, leave them. And things are decaying in the society. Nobody is being held account. Somebody will do something wrong and instead of that person to be punished, you say, oh, God said, leave him. He will be the judge. We are losing our senses. And that is why the politics, economy, security, everything can be going, nose diving and going south in the country and everybody is okay. Why? Because we believe that this earth is just transitionary. There is somewhere else where we will go the after here that we enjoy. So we can allow, it's okay, it's okay, we can suffer here, we would enjoy in heaven. But if you see countries that work, that mindset is not employed. They will demand accountability here. They want to enjoy themselves here first. Whether or not heaven exists, they will demand that 
The right thing is done here. But because we have become so docile, we allow anything slide in the hope of a better place tomorrow, which is heaven. No, no issues. Heaven is beautiful. But again, do not let religion make your brain docile. Two months ago, we covered the case of the footballer, Jigova, who had a heart condition and went to a pastor who told him that um, it is just this and that, nothing is wrong with him, he can do this. And he went and did it and he died. That is the kind of religious practice that I'm talking about here. Now, I'm not against him going to the pastor, but what about applying common sense vis-a-vis, -vis, side by side? Some type, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. I cannot touch God's anointed, oh. I don't, I beg go. Oh. I, I can't touch God's anointed, oh. but should the anointed touch other people? Touch, don't touch God's anointed mean, means respect, reverence your man of God. Respect your man of God. Do not persecute them. Do not commit crimes against them. They are like God's representative on earth. Have that reverence for them. That is don't touch. Know that a man of God will do something bad and you as a so-called believer believes that you do not touch that person because the man of God. Then in the courts, there should be disclaimers now that this court is open to everybody apart from men of God. Men of God should not be touched. When somebody does something wrong, that person should be held to account for it, regardless of their spiritual status. Some people have hidden behind men of God to commit ritual attacks, to commit all sorts of crimes. So are you telling me that God forbid your husband or your wife is a victim of these ritual pastors? There are many in a particular state, I don't want to call the name of the state in Nigeria, but every week we get that report, this prophet beheads this person, this prophet kills this person for ritual, for powers, for this, for that. So if such a prophet exterminates a member of your family and that prophet is caught, we will immediately write a petition to the inspector general, please, 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 release this prophet though. He's a man of God. Release him, release him. Touch not my anointed. You won't because it affects you directly. So I think we're taking this touch not my anointed totally out of context. An anointed should not touch other people. If an anointed does something wrong, the anointed should be held account. Some will tell you, I do not involve, involve myself in anything religion. I beg, I beg, leave him. You are like wandering God. Ah, oh, my people really perish from lack of knowledge. If you do not want to put your mouth in something religion, then maybe you are talking about not questioning the origin of God, not questioning when the world will eventually come to an end, the end of eternity, not questioning, um, okay, why did God make sin to exist when he knew that man would sin? You know, those very critical, logical questions that atheists ask, that can be a definition of not questioning religion. And I might agree with you that, okay, if you really want to know all the details of religion, you might not understand, you might just be confused. So it's good sometimes as believers or Christians, if you want to remain a Christian, for you not to question some things. But that does not mean that you cannot question atrocities. That does not mean you cannot question wrongs. That does not mean you cannot question bad behavior. If your man of God does something wrong, there is nothing wrong in saying this is wrong. It's nothing like touch nots. That man of God will not be touched if nothing wrong happens. Your position as a good person, as a Christian, as a believer, whatever you call yourself, is to ensure that the truth is upheld, is to ensure that justice prevails, is to ensure that if these people are lying, may they be punished, but if this prophet did this thing, may he be punished. Your true position as a child of God should be the right thing, not to form a camp, regardless of who was wrong or who was right. And you, you accept whatever the man of God does and you say judgment is of God. Judgment is of God, yes, on judgment day, but there is still judgment on earth. There is still judgment on earth. Judgment is of God does not mean that if people do wrong things, they should not be held account to Nigerian. What is going on with our common sense? So let us close the police stations and close the courts now and let everybody go ahead killing and kidnapping and stealing and leave every all the judgment for God. No, that is not the meaning. That's not the implication. God will do the judgment on the last day, but there is still a system on earth. We have found ourselves quoting the Bible to cover up anything, to tolerate all kinds of vices that is eating us up as a people. Look at the state of our country. We are one of the most religious people in the world, in quotes. You get into a street and there are more than 15 churches in one street. Some buildings, there are four churches sharing one building. But look at the quality of people that are 
applying the everyday roads. Look at the level of crime. Look at the depth of wickedness happening. And you wonder who are all the people attending all these churches? We have all twisted the doctrines. Judgment is of God. So people cannot be held accountable for what they did again. It's so unfortunate. This situation has really opened a lot of eyes to the mindset of a lot of people. And you know, the way we have taken religion in this part of the world. We have even <laughs> trust the black man. Even the people who introduced religion to us are not even practicing it the way we are. We have taken it to a fanatical level with all sorts of doctrines that impair common sense. May God help us. So guys, yes, we have come to the end of this video. As I mentioned earlier, these are points relating to religion. Every allegation against the late prophet T.B. Joshua is still allegedly. We will keep doing our findings. We will keep reporting the case as it is. And we will keep praying that God in his infinite power and mercy will reveal the truth about this case to us. If truly, as some people believe, these witnesses that graced the BBC documentary are telling lies against the late prophet, then we will keep praying that God's divine punishment will be on them. But if they are saying the truth, then we pray that God's vindication would also fall on them. And I will always be in the middle reporting the incidences neutrally as they pan out. So thank you so much guys for watching. If you're new here or if you just see my face for the first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, drop all your comments down in the comment section, turn on your bell notifications and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can also follow me on Instagram at Nezaville or Neza Pepe Rempe, which is my personal channel. Yeah, where I detail personal stuff about myself. You can follow me on the both of them, links of which will be down in the description box. Thank you again, guys. It's me, your girl, Barista Neza. And this is Nezaville. I'll see you in my next video where we're going to keep addressing issues that affect us as a people, affect us as a nation, affect us as a society, regardless of whose ox are God. I'll see you guys in my next one for now.